we, we, you know, we, you talk about all these sorts of things and, and your love and dedication in putting the machine together uh, with all of the parts and all of the care. And once it leaves your facility and your hands, it takes on another life with that of the artist and, and is 100%. exposed to a lot of, lot of things. And some of those things can, you know, perhaps make things go wrong. So you then through a warranty process will look after machines. But I'm sure you have sort of two or three basic daily or weekly activities that an artist can do to make sure that their coil is running in the best way possible. What are, what are the kind of the three top tips that you would give to artists to make sure they get the best out of their machine? Yeah, I think if you give it the power it wants, like we were talking about clip cord power supply, um, don't a couple things I try to tell people not to do. If there's a if there isn't a tube in the chuck, don't tighten it down. Just leave it alone. Uh, keep the machine clean, and uh, I, I don't wipe it down with with a bunch of uh, chemicals. Um, it's it's never a good idea. Um, and if you and if you do because. You, some tattooers don't understand what cross contamination is, and you know some people put bags over their machines and, and different things. Which a bag over the machine is it makes the machine dirty. Um, no matter which way you want to slice it, we did this shit like 15 years ago. We put uh, we put a black light ink into water, and we ran the machine and put a bag over it, and the oscillation and the needle spreads it spreads everything all over the place right it's kind of suction and it's kind of like just uh it's it's a you know how ultrasonic works you know how the ultrasonic cleaner ultrasonic clean with the wave same thing's happening with with the, with the needle you may not see it but it's definitely wow. happening but you know if if you give a wipe down with matticide or whatever follow it up with some distilled water and just clean it um, you don't want to leave. You, you want to. You want to neutralize some of that chemical, um, and uh, we can we can do a little bit of uh, we can do some some video seminars on uh, if if the spring breaks. You know what what should you do? Like how how do you fix a spring properly? And what's what's a really good way to, to you know to repair your machine and get it back to the way that it was when you first got it and what you know what type of finesse do you use when when putting some spring into the the machine and and you know how do you kind of how do you s set a machine up to run the way that you, you know, what you desire but yeah just keep, keeping things clean um, you know care for your tools uh, put them in the drawer or put them in a nice case um, and uh, and and just keep you know keep the contact uh, clean. You can you can I, I like to take a little piece of very fine sandpaper and I cut I with scissors I cut little strips about um, you know uh, eleven sixty four and I like to pull the little piece of the strip of uh, sandpaper. I'll I'll put it in between the contact screw and the spring and I'll pull it twice, be, you know, and clean the contact and then I'll flip it over and I'll just pull it twice, you know, between the, the spring and just, it kind of cleans things up. Mm -hmm. And then I also will do that and I'll take the coil and I'll, I'll compress the, the armature, you know, carefully down and I'll pull that through the armature and the, and the, and the coil, just a little clean, just clean a little bit. And um, that that tends to help, and and I always try to keep the in in the frame where the clip cord goes. I like to keep that clean as well, because sometimes you know you can get dirt and debris in there, and that will cause a problem. So, but have you got some other like builders that you you like? Wow, that's kind of cool. And not doing something different, but just doing a good, clean, solid friggin' machine. I, I look at it. I look at it a little differently than maybe I looked at it, you know, ten, fifteen years ago, or or even you know five years ago. But um, 
at this point, I kind of just like to look at tattoo machine builders that are are in it for some maybe some of the same reasons I'm in it, and they're willing to, you know, be friends. Um, I I I do look out into the world of of tattoo machines. Um, it's it's a different world than than when I started. There's a lot of. I think I think people thought at a certain point like, hey, I could make extra money with this, or I can do this, or I can do that with it, and I I kind of feel like the tattoo machine builders that kind of got into this to learn the tool and learn the the technical aspect of it. Probably, I'm probably going to get along with a little bit better than I would get along with people that got into it because they just wanted to make money. Mm-hmm. So, um, because typically the ones that got into it that just want to make money, they only take it to a certain point, and and that's okay too. But if I'm going to look up to somebody or respect somebody, it's typically going to be something I'm interested in, and I'm usually just interested in you know people that are you know, kind of giving back. So, so my whole, like my whole view on this whole thing, right. Tattooing, uh, just in life really in general, but tattooing, tattoo machine building, we, we all are just custodians. Like I've never really kind of thought of myself as like some, some like true innovator or anything like that, because I, I really believe that all humans are, are super connected, whether we want to believe it or not. And there's like this, there's this thing that we don't know about, really. I mean, we kind of know, but we don't really know. But there's like this thing that connects all of us, right? And we're just here, and we're, we're keeping our section clean, right, for the next group of people that can come and enjoy it. And I guess having that, like, sense or whatever has, has allowed me to love it more. And... Um, uh, I gravitate towards people that kind of have that same mindset. So, I recently had a um, a tattooer who had a shop. I built three machines how I like to tattoo, and if if two of the three or one of the three works how I hope it works, like I I don't know that gratitude, that humbleness to know that someone's earning money tattooing building machine that I've made as well and same to you and that 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 hum when you you tune it and you wire everything up and you you hope it's not earthing out and it's just you know the thing just sings it's yeah. I think that's that's a part of tattooing that magic and that's what I'm talking about that that bit of salt and pepper on the plate that just makes everything worth it that magic like that's that's something that can't be replicated it's that spark, you know, uh, pun intended. Like it's, it's fucking. Do you remember that feeling? I always go back to. You're you're having experience, and you're having experience with another person, and that's, that's the that's the key, right? Um. And and tattooing is a person to person thing. We we love the stories, and we love the history, and we love the nostalgia, because we love the people. Even though a lot of tattooers act like they don't like people very much, but it, it, at the end of the day, we love people, right? We really love the stories and and what we get from it, and and they're just they're a bunch of, you know, you got a bunch of crazy different people, and they're all experiencing this 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 one centralized love for something, right? How and, personal and is tattooing? It's raw intimacy right you walk into a shop whether it's a first meeting or or not and and you're intimate with that person right away right so you know uh, you definitely have responsibility um to understand people as a tattooer you you've got to understand how to treat people because they're in in a in a vulnerable spot um no matter what and you've got to to know how to respect the people, but but once you do those things, <clears throat> you're you know you you instantly make a friend for 
for you know 30 minutes to five hours or however long the tattoo takes and if you make the right impact and you you do a good job and you give the person or the people um your you know your attention and uh you give them that that experience they'll be back they'll be back always they'll be back um or i I, I like to do a traditional style tattoo or, or some kind of bold lined tattoo with some some you know black shading and color work. But um, I've tattooed I've done a lot of tattoos and and I've done a lot of tattoos that I I may not have chosen to do. But I always have found a way to get better at tattooing with every single tattoo I do. And this this. Uh, an older tattooer told me some story a long time ago and it was it made me think about it and you've got to think about you're going to drive home after you're done for the day or you're going to walk home or ride your bike or motorcycle whatever and you may never be coming back right so you kind of think about like every tattoo to you do is maybe the last tattoo you do. So you try to do your best no matter what, you know, and that's kind of a heavy thing to think about, but you know, whether it's, you know, a kanji or, or, a, a, you know, Celtic, I think that it's important to try to put yourself into everyone, you know, and, and I've always kind of thought about that. It's not always fun, but there's always something to learn. If you could give the young Brendan advice, and meet someone or just go back in time, what would you, what would be, where, where would you go? Uh, I guess attract, I have a, like a, a real strong attraction to, to Sailor Jerry, uh, for, for, I think we all do kind of, but I ha it's more, it's more for the mechanics and the, the mindset than it is for potentially the, the tattooing, uh, and the designs and, I think that I would probably wind up, you know, in the '60s, and hit, you know, spend spend a couple of days with him. And also, uh, an Australian tattooer named Des Conley. He was like a real, was like a real uh, eccentric. And oh, Jay. He made, he made the frames, you know, for for Jerry. There's so many. I mean, I don't, I don't even know how to how how. I I I'd, I'd get real greedy. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> uh, what would what would what would young Brendan tell older Brendan? Just take care of my body. I mean, uh, you know, uh, take care of my mind and my body. Um, I'm not sick or anything like that, but that's your health is really for 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 when you love something like this. You know, you, you're only you know. You're not really promised, but you, you know you, you you know you have a certain amount of time, right? And th life in general to me is just fascinating, and there's so many things that I want to to see or experience or learn. And you know, the older I get, to, the more I realize that every single second of every day is is like a gift. So that's kind of what I would, you know, remind myself, you know, um, I think at a younger, I didn't like, I didn't, I never did drugs. I smoked, I quit smoking a long time ago. Um, I never drank really. Um, I never really totally ate like shit or anything, but just as a, you know, a young tattooer, you just you, this, those are things you don't completely consider, you know, as you're younger. So it, it's it's more of a habit, you know. I think I think taking care of yourself and taking care of your body and and being the best you can always be for your craft is like because you are your best tool. Like this hand and this hand are like my best tools in my toolbox, right? So just kind of considering that is what I would tell myself. It's hard to tear yourself away. You know, you wake up in the morning yeah. and it's what you want to do. And you, if you're allowed, you'll keep going until the evening and to take time out to manage diet, exercise, 
uh, that mindfulness, yes. you know, that, that is really hard. This, this body and this, this mind is, is your best uh, asset, you know. So I, I think the next step for tattooers, the, the mindset is supporting, supporting companies who really, really care. Like you're a tattoo supply business, so you represent great companies. So you've got to represent them well. But sourcing those great companies is 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 very important for the longevity of tattooing because now in 2021 we've got we've got a lot of different companies out there right and they're a lot of them are just little distillations of the next one and how how, how do we as tattooers and tattoo practitioners and and you know um entrepreneurs in in tattooing um how do we take care of tattooing and be responsible. So you've got all this stuff, right? There's all this yeah. just stuff being produced. Yeah. And what where is the benefit is is what is what I want to urge people to ask themselves when they go out to, to buy equipment and buy um, things that are uh, you know that they use disposable whatever. I have so many things that I'd love to shoot you a DM. Uh, just little questions, you know, if you, you cool with yeah. that. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm only a young pup yeah. in the game. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, it, everybody's on their own quest, you know, young, new, whatever. Uh, everybody's on a quest. And uh, when people put the, the effort in, you know, and they seek the knowledge, I do my best to... to to give the knowledge I can. Um, I've been really lucky and people that are more important, you know, that have more important things to do than to sit around with me have given me the time. So I try to just pay that, you know, I've been lucky. I, I, I push it forward, you know? So, um, Super grateful yeah, for your time machine. today, Brandon. I mean, I can't say how thankful we are. Of course. I mean, it, it, that's what it takes, right? Like, there, there's a lot of people that take themselves, like, real serious in life. And, and that's okay, too. But I'm in it here for, you know, for all the reasons I'm in it for. And, and I just, I like to talk about tattoos, you know. I've been in situations where I've, you know, I've talked about tattoos with people that I didn't really totally jive with, and and usually it's a it's a quick it's a quick talk, you know. But um, I always have thought, like early early in the game, I I watched a lot of tattooers kind of be, uh, you know, mean and and shit talk, and it happens. You know, we're all human. It's just it just happens. But the one thing I could never understand fully is I would see a group of tattooers or an individual and another individual or a group and they would, would they would not like each other, right? Or they wouldn't like me or I wouldn't like, you know, maybe I wouldn't like them. And the one thing I couldn't never wrap my head around was, well, why the fuck would we not like each other? You have the – I can tell that you like tattooing. You have tattoos all over your fucking body. I have tattoos all over my body. I can tell you like what I like. Same with tattoo. It's it's more in tattoo machine building, which makes no fucking sense to me because m most most tattoo machine builders are just blind leading the blind, right? And if we got along a little bit better, I feel like – there, there'd be more of an evolution of, of the craft, but. Brandon, I, I can't thank you enough for your time and, you know, taking taking time out of your day to speak to us and, and share a lot of your thoughts. I found it amazing. Sam, I know you've, uh, you might, your it's, brain melted. It's Christmas for me, dude. Like, fuck. Uh, so we're well, really grateful. Well, thanks guys. Awesome. I really appreciate it. All right, cheers mate. You have a good day. All right, have a good one. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.